big time changes as Wizard of the Coast looks to continue to steer the Magic the Gathering Goliath aircraft carrier ship, whatever you want to call it, in the collectability direction. We got an announcement showing that a product will no longer be print to demand, however, will be limited printed from the start. I want to talk about what that means for not only that product today, but the direction Magic has been going for the better part of a year. And if you would have told me it would all start with this right here, I would have told you you were crazy. All right, let's get into it. The first announcement from Wizards of the Coast in 2024 is, with no surprise, about collectability. Well, maybe it's no surprise to me. I think a lot of people are going to be a bit taken aback by this. Wizards recently announced a change to the print style of Secret Lair. I want to talk about that change today, and then I also want to talk about the game as a whole. I believe that I have shown evidence, and we will continue to do so in, the, in today's video, that Magic the Gathering has been trying to shift the gears, change the direction of the giant aircraft carrier that is our favorite card game in a direction of more collectability while trying to maintain some balance. We're going to get into all of that today, but if you haven't subbed yet, click the subscribe button. We're on our way to 7,500. The big announcement was, of course, centered around Secret Lair, and within the last, I think, year, maybe two, Secret Lair is not not what it used to be. Harken back to the days of the start of Secret Layers, and when you would get an announcement or a notification on your Twitter, yeah, back before it was X when this little blue bird on your phone, you'd get this announcement would be like, a new Secret Layer has dropped. And for those interested, that was an extremely exciting time. Now, not going to get into whether or not Secret Layer should exist or shouldn't exist here, that's everyone's opinion, but for those interested, it was exciting. The idea that there was a limited Magic the Gathering drop with unique art that was seemingly going to be collectible and maybe contain some cards that you yourself wanted to get your hands on was something worth going to a website, sitting in a queue, and trying to get one of these, well actually they were shaped differently back then, but I didn't have one handy, shipped to your door. Now, this was the best version of Secret Layer in a world where we have to have Secret Layer. It does not make sense for it to exist as it did in 2023. And let me remind you, we went from the idea of an exciting announcement, maybe something new, didn't know when the next one was coming, limited timer running out to, well, they drop every quarter. There is literally 47,000 of them and variants within the Secret Layer variants. That's right, that was a thing. And you could get them through the whole quarter, we were going to print as many as we need, and you were going to get them shipped to you kind of whenever. And Wizards of the Coast themselves seem to say that they do not agree with this policy anymore. They want secret layers to not only be collectible, but to revert back to some of that original magic that the layer and the layer announcement has. And they said in their announcement on January 2nd that they are going to be shifting the model to which secret layers are printed away from the print to demand model where everyone who orders gets a copy printed for them and then everything is shipped out the door to a limited print model. And Wizards of the Coast announces they are doing this under the guise, under the shadow or the, I don't know, I don't think this is why they're doing it, but they say they're doing it so that people can get their secret layers more quickly and efficiently. And off the top of the head, that makes sense. If all these things are printed, ready to go ahead of time, you just fulfill the orders, ship them out, everyone gets their stuff in their hands, bing, bang, boom, you're done. And the print to demand model, well, you kind of gotta, gotta let demand come in first, right? You, maybe you print an initial allocation and then if more people order, you have to print some more. That's the whole process of print to demand. It's very, it's in the name of the process. Everyone, I think, on this channel can figure it out. And if not, let me know in the comments section below. I'm sure someone in the comments can help you out. But what's going on here, is Wizard of the Coast is making secret layers feel collectible again. Now, I say this with a caveat. Secret layers could still be way overproduced and not collectible at all. In fact, that might be the best bet on the table at the moment, is that Wizards of the Coast is going to Wizards of the Coast and overprint something. But imagine a world where secret layers 
aren't actually limited. Drops sell out, there is a queue again. Well, now we have a vessel, an avenue, for something legitimately, legitimately collectible in Magic the Gathering. The next big step, in my opinion, is to make them all like the WPN secret layers. For those who don't know, check with your local game store. If they're a WPN store a couple times a year, once or twice, they get a secret layer that only game stores get to sell and they get allocated that product. Yeah, not print to demand, a limited print model. And then you can go to your game store, you can buy the product, Magic can make money, you get something all cool art, cool art, collectible, you get all this stuff. It's the perfect way all secret layers should be delivered to the community in that fashion. You're welcome, Wizards of the Coast free advice. But this does, you know, leave the question, is Wizards of the Coast leaving money on the table? And this is the one I think everyone's going to be hyped about, or everyone's going to have strong feelings about. In this model, if, if, if Wizards of the Coast actually prints things in small amounts, if, not, not as small amounts, but if these products are able to actually sell out, where not everybody gets their opportunity to buy, and secret layers are exciting again, theoretically, they are leaving money on the table. But there's an element of maybe some of that hype, if we are limited print, is what drives the sales. And if things were unlimited print, none of that money would have come in. Anyway, listen, I'm not an economist. I'm not a market expert. I do track every single sold listing of sealed product on TCG Player when it comes to major magic and other TCG releases. So make sure you're subscribed because that's a lot of fun. We go live every Friday with that data. And whew, the magic data this week is a doozy but this is just kind of a a further step in this direction that i want to talk about of collectability with magic the gathering and i think we've seen them taking this step for some time now before we get into the collectability discussion let's take our emotions out of it when it comes to collectability when it comes to adding stuff to our binders building collections for us personally things get and feel extremely personal. And we often disagree on what one group of people thinks is collectible versus another versus another. Collectibility is really up to the individual and up to pockets of our community. But with that kind of umbrella on this conversation being laid out, let's admit that Wizards of the Coast has been trying to drive the Magic the Gathering ship in the direction of collectability for the better part of a year starting with serialized cards which a lot of people don't agree are collectible but they still hold a great value on the secondary market they are selling in good numbers not only on tcg player but also on ebay and private platforms and forums like facebook and discord but these cards are things that i see people proud to display and for those who are not proud to display them they are an avenue to give it sell it to that collectible community and get the things you want which in my mind is a perfect balance and it doesn't just stop with the serialized cards we've seen other collectibles like the confetti foils from wilds of eldraine and the emblem cards from jurassic world for lost caverns of ixalan these two runs of cards not only command an insane value on the secondary market like look at the price of some of these cards some of these cards are just nutty but they're selling in really good numbers and that to me was a shock showing that members of our community are willing to spend this amount of money to add these products to their various collections commander decks whatever you want to call it this is good for magic the gathering now before i get jumped on i actually sit in a weird spot here this is wizards of the coast saying hey we are trying to transition away from the game pieces era. Big shout out, Rudy Hood over, over at Alpha Investments. Always talking about the game pieces era and the collectability era. And it's been my position on this channel, and it always will be, that you have to have a healthy balance of both. Magic the Gathering is fighting this battle where certain cards need to be affordable to an extent. Your better cards, your more played cards, your more powerful cards are always going to be more expensive than the less powerful ones. That is always going to be the case. But you also have to have a version or variant of some of these cards that are worth showing off, are worth adding to collections, are worth remembering uh, iconic times in Magic the Gathering and set releases. You have to find this balance. And it's why I think we are going to see a reduction in the number of variants in 2024 to make some of these high-end variants feel more special, but we will not see them go away. There has to be some kind of balancing act there. And this is the battle that Wizards of the Coast is constantly fighting. And although I don't envy that battle, I will say not doing the best job in the last couple years. Last year, I could see the shift in direction, and I'm liking where we're headed, but I, I need more shift back towards the collectability side because, let's face it, when things get more collectible, the cost of your base non-foil card that comes out of the play booster is 
probably not going to change much. So all in all, this is a continued step in the collectability direction for Magic the Gathering, and that to me, as someone who collects Magic the Gathering and all the different ways that I've laid out before on the channel, makes me excited. I'm excited for this to possibly mean something again. I'm excited to get those notifications be like, oh, I'm not a big secret layer person, but maybe I'll check this one out. If it really is limited, it draws me in. It gets the juices going. And exciting things like that in our community are always worthwhile. And the fact that it's, you know, cards that are already printed, leaving out the wizards is just entering the secondary market and reprinting the cards of value. I'm like, we can't have that argument, but also say like the secret layers dollar for dollar aren't worth what the cards are worth. So what the heck wizards you're selling us $40 or $13 of cards for $40. Like they're not manipulating the second secondary market. If they're doing both, like, I don't know. That's something I clearly don't understand. I don't understand how you can... It feels like we're talking out of both sides of our mouth on that one with the community. So, all in all, I, the secret layers don't bother me. They're not major for me. My personal opinion, it's not something I go out and constantly chase. I'm not buying every secret layer drop. I have a couple that have been seemingly cool and I like on my shelf and I like to add to my collection, but... Other than that, you know, I'm excited for some of the excitement to come back. Excitement in our community is always a good thing. But hey, excitement on this channel is also a good thing. We're racing to 7,500 subs. And if you've never shared a hometown TCG video on any social media platform, Discord, Facebook, whatever it might be, X, Twitter, Bird app, make sure you do so because it helps grow our community. And honestly, it just makes me smile when I scroll through my social media feeds and I see a video. I'm like, oh my God, that's really cool. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Until next time. You guys know me, my name is Josh, and we will see you around. All right, goodbye.